girls, grab your beer. Hey everybody, this is Charlie from Anthrax, and you are listening to Today's Food Doggle. This is Mark Metcalf, and you are listening to Today's Food Doggle with Bailey on Domain Cleveland Radio. You are listening to Today's Food Doggle with Bailey on Domain Cleveland Radio. Yes, Kato Kalen listens to this all the time. Returns to historic Crew Stadium. Slipknot. Disturbed. Pantera. The original Misfits. Evanescence. Slim Biscuit. Judas Priest. Stay. Breaking Benjamin. A day to remember. Falling in reverse. Sleep Token. Rise Again. 311. Seether. Mud Van. And many more. May 16th through the 19th. Columbus, Ohio. Tickets on sale now at SonicTempleFestival.com. What's going on, everybody? It's Bill Bailey with today's Boondoggle. And a uh, real quick housekeeping note, if you're watching us on YouTube or Odyssey or BitChute or Rumble, please hit that uh, follow subscribe button. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, whatever pa- podcast platform you're using, please hit that uh, follow and subscribe button so we can continue to bring you conversations like the one I'm about to bring you today. You know, it's... Uh, the holiday season, spending a lot of money, and I'm low on cash, so I'm accepting cash bribes today. <laughs> Speaking with the guys from the band Cash Bribe. You like that? I've been playing that all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing? Good, man. Can't complain, man. So we got Joe, the vocalist, and Kirk, the guitar player, the band Cash Bribe, New York, and uh man a lot of stuff i want to talk to uh when i was going down the the cash bribe uh rabbit hole here but usually when i have people on for the first time i like to get a uh quick background so do you guys remember originally what did you want to be when you grew up oh shit um i wanted to be an astronaut originally um but then i i saw some story on the news it was like it was like this big uh, hidden camera investigation of like these dudes in the Air Force like getting like hazed really bad. So like I saw this as a little kid, and I'm just like, that's it, nah, fuck that. Wow. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was that that put an end to that. Um, and then after that, I guess it was music. <laughs> I, I was hoping you're gonna say you saw some video with like Flat Earth Dave and space was fake. But... Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, how about you, Joe? Uh, can I be boring? I wanted to be a rock star <laughs> uh, or like a, a, an athlete. I, I was really into football when I was re- a little kid. I wanted to be, a, you know, a bruiser. Nice, nice. And then when uh, obviously, you know, music caught your guys' ear, do you remember like who, uh, you know, uh, like what age you were and like uh, what was it? And who was it that kind of caught your ear and pulled you into the music world? Shit. So um, I remember, you know, when I was a little kid, my mom had the uh, had a record player, right? And I uh, had I'd have headphones, kind of like these, and uh, we'd listen to like uh, she had like Michael Jackson on uh, on vinyl and all that. And then uh, as I grew older, um, oh, there was. The first metal song I think I ever heard was Corn's uh, Blind on like a X Games compilation. You remember the X Games? They still have those? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> but um, I, I heard it on the X Games compilation, and like it was like the BC Boys, which is cool. And then it was Corn. I was like, oh shit. And then you know, from there, I, you know, I, I did that for a little while, and then I realized that I don't really like dudes like whining as much as new metal did at the time 
So then, you know, discover like Slayer and Metallica and all that, Pantera and, you know, whatever. And then it just all goes from there. And before you know it, you get into like guttural vocals and, you know, three million BPM and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What about you, Joe? Uh, I came from a, a really musical family. Um, my both of my parents have just like crazy good taste in music. Like my mom's first concert was Sly and the Family Stone. Like, are you serious? You know, um, and they were more or less really supportive of me learning everything I could about rock and roll as as early as I could. You know, we took a lot of road trips growing up. We we didn't fly anywhere, so these eight hour drives of just like all Neil Young, you know, or like <laughs> all uh, I don't know the Beatles or the clash or, or whatever. And, um, and I'm from Dallas, Texas originally at stars. Um, and that scene was ah fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that scene when I was in like middle school and in high school was, was awesome. There, there was hardcore, um, there was punk, there was metal. A lot of those guys are still around frozen soul where, where dudes I watched, the guys in Frozen Soul, I, I watched in punk bands. I played um, a couple shows with uh, Chris from Frozen Soul's old band, Unit 21, who's still like one of my favorite, favorite groups. Um, There's a lot of good crust coming out of, of Texas at the time. Chaos and Tejas was popping off. I so there's so. just like a lot of really good heavy music culture, you know, hitting Texas at the right time for me. I, I knew some neighborhood kids that just, fed me a healthy diet of, of heavy music and, and, um, you know, shout out Phil. And, uh, I had a buddy, Matt, that just locked himself in his room and played guitar all the time. And, and I learned that if I wanted to keep hanging out with him, I had to learn how to play music and I had to get with it too. And, um, the rest was an addiction from there, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. And then, uh, like what now you had already, touched a little bit about the scene that you grew up in, but what about you, Kirk? What kind of uh, music scene did you grow up around? His is sick. Well, uh, originally, uh, I grew up in Charlottesville, uh, which is mostly known for the Dave Matthews band, so it's terrible. Um, you know, fucking horrendous. Um, but, you know, I had like a you know high school band and all that, whatever. But then I moved to, uh, went to go to school in Richmond. Uh, which has a really vibrant like punk hardcore scene and um you know got involved in that and um you know just played in a bunch of bands uh you know while i was there and um you know when i moved up uh to new york it, it was kind of like i moved up because i needed a i needed a job honestly um and uh you know when i came up here like i got in this job and then i'm like trying to see what the scene's all about up here and then i'm just like oh shit like it was richmond was more like tight-knit it was richmond was more organic I, I guess you could say um it felt it felt more like uh it was just more fun um but you know new york i feel like it's starting to come around where like um you know where whereas it used to be uh uh you know people would only go to touring bands shows and that was pretty much it um, you know, it seems like there seems to be more of a local embrace, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's where I came from, more of a, a, um, a uh, more tighter knit kind of scene. Gotcha. Yeah, I started getting worried when you guys were talking because I was like, man, did I read that right? They're a New York band, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah we're, we're, the, uh, years. <laughs> we're the non-New Yorkers. Uh, we're, the, we're the transplants. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, uh, our, our bassist is from Queens, and then uh, Larry's like a Long Island kid. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, I mean, you know, I mean, New York's got like a rich history of heavy music, though, too, you know? Hell and yeah. and uh, I've got, uh, you know, gotten to know quite a few of the guys from like, you know, the, the hardcore scene up there. But, uh, like, <clears throat> but you're saying like, you know, those are, that's like, you know, more old school tight knit. But now, like, for the new guys coming up, you don't feel it's as, uh, communal i mean when i got here initially it didn't feel uh well i mean at the same time too like i guess i just wasn't in it you know what i mean so like you know you kind of like it takes a minute to get used to your surroundings and then kind of like feel out like where you're supposed to be where things are you know all that kind of stuff 
Um, so it's kind of, it's almost like a comfort thing, I guess, you know? Yeah. It, it was yeah. confusing to get into, uh, for that's me, a, just like, that's a good word for it. Yeah. You know, I, I came up, um, I, I, I was in an, a, a band for a long time. I'm still in it, but we were doing psychedelic and doom type stuff and trying to find our little niche in that in, in New York was hard trying to find where the shows were as a transplant was really hard. Um, and and maybe it's for better or worse because of social media it's it's easier to figure out where the shows are happening even the ones they don't want you to go to if you're not from here you know and um it's it's uh it's getting easier or it has gotten easier yeah, but like kirk said maybe we just figured out how to like find those shows and get to those shows and you find the bands to follow but there's a lot going on in, in new york right now there's a they're like three or four different punk communities, you know, throughout the city and, and more probably, but um, it, it's really cool um, to, to see like such a diversity of, of bands and, and like people from different backgrounds and, and playing like heavy extreme music, metal, punk, crust, whatever. Um, there, there's a lot of it going on right now. It's, it's really interesting. By the way, is that a, is that a WWF shirt that you're wearing? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it like is. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it and I was just like, I, I'm, 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 uh, I've had a lot of Dayquil, Nightquil recently, so I might be tripping a little bit. So I, just <laughs> <to make> sure. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's a, something going around with the the weather change and everything. But yeah, always yeah. representing, man. Our drummer uh, got us sick, man. So we're all, <laughs> I think we're all fucked. This, you know. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's why I feel a little stuffy myself, but I'm glad we're uh, knocking this out. Um, yeah, if you guys get a chance, man, make it over to New York Hardcore Tattoo and, and talk to my buddy Vinny Hell Stigma. Yeah. Oh, we're, and, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go Hi. Uh, Hi, Vinny. Tell I've them heard that of, uh, sent you. I you heard know? of your band. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not front you know or are you guys uh <laughs> yeah he's been he's been on on here and he's an old friend of mine so yeah tell him uh bill bailey right over there oh, hell he, yeah, he'll man. take you under his wing you know he's a good dude well good Shit. guy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take that yeah but and oh, he yeah. accepts cash bribes so perfect um, yeah. there we go yeah <laughs> We're speaking of which like when did uh like this uh band come together for you guys uh when did cash bribe come together honestly uh so we started, uh, it was kind of like in the late, like it was like 2018, 2019, um, myself and Larry, the drummer, uh, we were kind of just fucking around, honestly. Uh, we were, um, you know, we, we were kind of just spending a lot of money at bars and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, what, like, what can we do that is a little more productive than just sitting at Second Chance Saloon all day and, you know, getting drunk as shit. Um, so my buddy, uh, Colin, he's the original bass player and, um, he's sort of like, Hey, let's, let's go over here. This is like a, a rental by the hour sort of spot. Uh, so we just kind of just fucked around for a little while. And then, uh, eventually, um, you know, it was kind of just figuring out that, you know, there's a certain sound that we could do, uh, which is, you know, rock and roll. And, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's the sound that like, you know, Larry can play the hell out of and, um, you know, just hard, like it harkens back to like, you know, the bands I used to play in and I don't know, it was just, uh, it just kind of took off. And then, uh, during the pandemic, we didn't have anything to do. Right. And, um, you know, in order not to go crazy, you, you, you know, that's what, for me, that's what I focused on. It's like, I'm like writing songs for cash bribe because other than that, I'm stuck at home, you know, drinking scotch you know like i'm i'm Ooh, scotch yeah yeah i have yeah i would go through like the uh you know the the johnny walker or whatever but like yeah man it was just like trying to just pass time and shit and um you know as as things went along we recorded a record and um you know that was cool and but then like we kind of wanted to step it up you know what i mean like you know Larry. We, we want to play shows. We wanted to, um, you know, just really just naturally evolve. And um, so that's when we uh, went out and uh, got an actual singer, uh, Joe. <laughs> um, 
before that, we were trying to do it where um, I was singing and playing guitar, and I'm not that good. So, like, I would try it for a little while, you know, wrote songs that I was like, all right, there's not a lot of words, so maybe I can do this. No, nah, it was just, it was, it was shit. It, it, it didn't work. Um, but uh, we got Joe, and, you know, Joe's just killer and, you know, knows so much, you know, about music in general. Um, you know, and that really gave us a kick in the ass. And then, um, you know, we got Brian because uh, our bass player, Colin, he left, you know, uh, you know, life popped up and, um, you know, we got Brian and, uh, you know, now it's, you know, just like four guys really like, you know, focused in on what we want to do. And, um, you know, it's just been, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. The, uh, nice. <laughs> we like really bonded over um not just like playing songs to play songs but to 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 push ourselves and and um one of the reasons i joined was that these guys like to work when they're hanging out you know we're drinking beers at practice we're having a good time but we're we're working and we're trying to write songs and we're trying to to push larry as hard as he can drum we're, we're kirk is pushing himself as hard as he can he's you know each song he's bringing in new techniques and he's, he's, you know, we, we're all doing our homework. Um, and, and, and for us, it's not just, you know, the satisfaction, the fun in it is, is pushing ourselves and trying to like get to a new point every time. And, and, um, we all seem to share that goal, that, that like desire. Um, we're not just jamming, but we're, we're doing it with purpose. And, and, um, that was my, my big reason to join the band. And I, I think Brian, felt similarly that he he came in he was a shoe in like he you know two songs we were like this is our guy um yeah. but he <laughs> he wants to work he he wants to be he you know he and i have both been in bands for uh for 10 years plus and um we're just looking to um push ourselves into territory we hadn't been before and what was the inspiration for the the name <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we went through a few names uh, before we settled on that one. Uh, we were uh, adult situations for a little while. Um, I liked it, but uh, uh, the other guys weren't, weren't so into it. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, actually, it's a, it's a Simpsons reference, honestly. Uh, if you watch, uh, there's the episode with Chief Wiggum, and then you see the badge that says, like, cash bribes only. I'm like, oh, shit, that <laughs> That kind of works actually, and uh, nice. So the Simpsons predicted you guys too. I, Wouldn't you know? You it? know holy <laughs> shit! You know, I, wow. I didn't even. I didn't actually think about it that way, but yeah. <laughs> That's got to go on a shirt or something. Who the fuck knew, man? <laughs> Chief Wiggum's badge. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> That's good, yeah. good shit. So yeah, and then um, you know, I was checking out like uh. You know, going down, going down the rabbit hole a little bit for, uh, you know, obviously you guys big uh, Black Flag, Rollins era Hell yeah. uh, fans. Uh, I saw that, you know, I could hear that influence there. But uh, you were coming together kind of like during the whole COVID uh, pandemic shit. That's what you're talking about, like trying to keep keep sane with some scotch or whatever. And right. Yeah. I mean, it was just like. You know, earlier on, like, I, I think what you see in the new album that we, that we put out uh, is kind of like a refinement of a lot of things that we came up with during COVID when, you know, things were at its peak um, insanity. And, um, you know, the, like the concept of like escape from New York is um, honestly, um, I, I was in a car at like the height of the pandemic. I don't, I don't remember where I was going, but... Um, you know, it was night. It was nighttime, and I'm driving by uh, on the BQE. You know, um, coming from South Brooklyn, you get a really nice view of the, of the city, like skyline and all that, right? But you, you you go by there, and there's no lights on, and it's just, like I've never seen that in my life. Um, <laughs> you know, like I've never seen New York like that dead looking. You know, yeah. uh, you know. So in uh, in doing that, like you know. I've always had a thing for um, apocalyptic kind of, you know, imagery and thinking and all that. And it just really, it's really like hit, you know, hit a, hit a spot with me. So, um, 
you know, that's, I think that's where that song comes from. Um, and then like, you know, when, uh, when Joe joined us, so, you know, I think he really got like that concept of, you know, urban, you know, decay. Like it was kind of how like New York is like a big, is like a smaller version of like the big picture of the world. Um, I suppose I'm probably not explaining it too well. Um, <laughs> but it, Joe seemed to get it what I was trying to get at. And, um, you know, that's, I think that's where the rest of the, that pushed the rest of the album, um, you know, to the finish line. Did you uh, happen to uh, see that Walking Dead series, Dead City? That's like supposed to be New York City. I hadn't seen it, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys were into the walking dead. I, I, you know, I didn't give up on it. Like everybody else. I'm, I'm a glutton. So I, I try and <laughs> ride everything out to the end. And then I yeah, check out the spinoffs and the spinoff was pretty cool too. Cause it's all in New York city after it's all like fallen and oh, zombies okay. and, and everything. So maybe you'll find some Without inspiration that. there. That's what it reminded me of when you said you've seen it all like, you know, dead basically with the lights off and everything. But, uh, was, uh, Joe, with you guys during the first EP, Face Mac, Face Mask City. No, that was uh, that was me on vocals uh, and guitar, and then Colin, uh, the guy I was talking about earlier, he was the bass player, and then Larry's on drums. Um, we recorded that during the pandemic. Um, Colin knew uh, uh, this guy that um, he had a nice studio out in Long, like Babylon, I think, uh, Long Island, and. Um, basically like he used to work with Colin. So he's just like, yeah, you guys can come to my studio and, you know, just hang out and record whatever. Um, while you're there, do my, do the laundry for the studio. And, you know, you know, it's all good. And we would just basically go in around when, um, I think the guy from one of the guys from ball beat was like living there. Um, yeah, he was like Uh, living Rob. Yeah. 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 He was living. Yeah. 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 It was, he was, uh, he was, he was like in there. Um, I think he was working on something. Uh, maybe it was like guitar tutorials or something like that. But basically like we'd go in around when he was working, like when he wasn't, you know, doing something like, I think to finish the record, we came in and he was like upstairs sleeping. Um, and we're like doing our thing. And, uh, the soundproofing is just so good that he, he couldn't hear us, which is, you know, amazing. Um, nice. But um, yeah, yeah. So that was that. So then, like, onto this one. This was like our first, like, you know, we're we're all four of us. We're gonna go to this. We you know, we're gonna pick out a studio and go to it. And like, it was it was more with purpose. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Whereas, the first one was like your trial run, right? This is the- yeah, yeah. The first one was a trial run. First one was just kind of like a clusterfuck of. <laughs> I just want to be out of, out of my house during the pandemic, and you know. Yeah, I was going to ask. Like, I mean, what I know, like New York had some heavy restrictions. So, were you guys like, w- was this like some bootleg underground, like sneaking out studio time thing, or? Yeah, yeah or, pretty much. I mean, like, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Out, man. damn. <laughs> it's never for worse, man. I mean, you know, I, uh, uh, I don't want to uh, vouch for the uh, morality of it, but um, yeah, yeah, that's basically what we did. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you gotta find anybody here, man. I, uh, I was like, fuck it, man. It, you know, uh, freedom. You know, that's why I kind of like reading the whole like, I don't know, the name Face Mask City. It's like uh, I don't know, like. There was like a message you were uh, sending out, and your or th- what kind of influence you had when you were writing that one. Yeah, well, I mean that was a weird time too, because that was around the time of the you know all, all the uh, the George Floyd uh, uprising and just the uprising against police, and um, you know that really just the anger that's in the city at the time. Um, oh yeah, and I mean it's still here, of course, um, but just like the fucking. It just there it would be the kind of thing where you where you would drive by and you see like police like reacting to the situation you'd be watching those motherfuckers because you're like dude i don't want to see the, like i don't want to see them stomp some dude out you know what i mean like it's like you know you would see it and um i don't know it was it was just like it was definitely like a lot of things were coming together at the same time. Um, oh yeah. It was like a perfect storm of like a fucking, uh, you know, like a pressure cooker, man, just getting ready to 
blow. You know? Yeah, yeah. When, if, if you read like, time. if you read Kirk's lyrics from Face Mask City, and like, you know, this is what I was reading and joining, like Bad Vibes and March of the Creeps. Um, like Face Mask City, like extends to so many things, and there's just like there was just such a depersonalization, you know, which was the stark contrast. I live on this block in Queens, you know, kind of outside of the city, but still in it. But, you know, during 2020, all of my neighbors and I like got along, we got to know each other, but then immediately outside of the block, it was just like, nobody want, you know, we, we live in a city where we pretend to not know anybody. We don't look at each other, make eye contact or anything like that. But then, um, it's the level of depersonalization in, in 2020. Just nobody, th there was no like common ground. Um, no. And, and I, 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 that's like Kirk's lyrics. Just like I'm reading them. I was like, holy shit. He like nailed it. He nailed it. Um, it's like we were all fucking confused and angry and whatever. And um, being in the city was, yeah, like big fucking pressure cooker and, and, you managed to write a really good EP about it. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you. <laughs> it's like, you know, I mean, it had to be therapeutic for you too, you know, to get, just get that shit out. You know, I'm sure it, like so many others were probably like, I mean, like Joe said, he connected with what you wrote. I'm sure so many other people would connect with that too and how they were feeling. And you were able to, uh, you know, I guess it, it, you know, the primal scream is like a, uh, you know, th a therapy, uh, form of therapy. Yeah, you know, because it's better than being out there in the fucking face mask stopping people. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, no, uh, yeah. So then, um, so now, like, Escape from New York, uh, it's out now on on Fandango Records, and that is like now with Joe, kind of like you said. There's elements of what was Face Ma Mask City brought up sure. into. Um, mm -hmm. escape from New York, or is it like mostly all brand new? Um, it, it, it's a, a lot of those tracks were, uh, we demoed them, uh, before Joe and Brian came on. Um, you know, we had demoed them, uh, is we have demos with me doing the vocals on them. You know, they're written, they're done. Um, you know, that's a lot from, you know, that era, but then, um, you know, the certain amount of material ended up being stuff that we just came up with uh, together. Uh, pretty much right before you we go in to record, it's like, oh shit, let's add this in. Oh shit, let's add this in. Yeah. You know, we were we were polishing lyrics the morning of our of our last session. Like it, yeah. it, it came down to the wire, which you know, I, it is kind of how I work, unfortunately. But um, we did pull it off. You know. Yeah. yeah, it was killer. Like Joe, like he was like one take Jake, um, just just <laughs> knocking these things out, you know. And then, like, what for uh, for you, Joe? Like, what was uh, like the message you were trying to, uh, you know, uh, get out through that? Um, pessimism, man. Um, <laughs> just just pessimism. Um, so so I I'll, I'll say like off the bat, I wrote Creature of Consumption and ICBM and half of life is devastating and the rest were, were Kirk lyrics, but I, I do connect with those. And, and I think Kirk was hinting at a similar hopelessness. Um, I'm one of those climate nuts. I I'm just constantly reading about how we're going to die next. Um, and it was just echoing through my brain. Um, and, and I was just sort of sorting through the like powerlessness of life. We, we, we only get a certain amount of autonomy. We only get a certain amount of freedom and, um, you know, we get a certain amount of time to be here and it, it will be taken from us. Yeah. It could be in a big climate disaster. It could be in a fucking nuclear war, but it could also just be like cancer, you know, and it's, um, just finding that similar hopelessness in all of it and trying to work with it. Um, but then turn it into like opportunity. You know, if it's all fucked, then then what does it matter what you do? Go have fun, man. Go do it. Um, you know, and um, that that was kind of that's what I t I took away from that experience of of like writing these words and you know recording you know Kirk's words and my words. I think there's like a vibe of kind of like we all know that we live in this capitalist hellhole. 
uh, you know, where, where you work, you sleep and you die. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think it's all just kind of just a, the natural reaction to, you know, being a commodity ourselves, you know, like our time, our effort, all that we're just, it's, it's commoditized and, uh, it's not apparently not worth a lot. Um, so, you know, I think the, the, a lot of the stuff on the record is really a reaction to that, um, in, in various ways. Yeah. Like I've, I've visited New York. Uh, I, like I said, I got friends out there. I visited uh, and you know, a lot of cool sites got to actually see some WWE back in the day oh. with stone cold at, at Madison square garden. Damn. Uh, oh, sick, dude. All right. But, uh, but I wouldn't want to live there, man. You know, I, I was happy to visit, but I was like, I, I'm, and I, I live uh, near Cleveland, and and I'm oh, too shit. close to the city now. You know, I like <laughs> I like getting out. Like you talk about the climate and shit, man. I'm at more at peace when I'm out in nature, when I'm out away from all this shit, when I'm around yeah. trees and my feet are grounded in the earth and shit. I mean, I'm sounding hippie, like, but you know, there's some like legitimacy no. to. You know, just You're sounding getting, black metal, man. Yeah, you need to be in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's like you know, like I said, great, great to visit. But I could see why you'd want to, you know, uh, why you'd feel that way. And 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 uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities there for you guys and everything. But uh, yeah, <laughs> escape from New York, man. I get it, man. So speaking of that, though, does uh, do you guys get uh, any guest appearances from Snake Pliskin? <laughs> if only, wish, man. man. Yeah. Yeah. If only we were kind of hoping that uh, they would remake Escape from New York and then sort of be like, oh, yeah, who are these assholes that made this, you know, record? You know, <laughs> maybe we could get a meet and greet with Kurt Russell or something like that, you know? There we go. Yeah, no shit, yeah. man. Have him sign your CD. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> take the opportunity. Nice. And then, um, like, Speaking of the ICBM, I was checking out the the that music video, and uh, it was like taking me back, like to you know we got you know, I mean we got a nice hardcore uh, punk scene here in Cleveland too, and we you know it took yeah. me back to some of the days I'd be out at like house parties and shit, and guys be playing in the living room and and tearing shit up and whatever. But uh, um, I really dug. Uh, I think it was your bass player's glasses too. I Hell yeah! Asked about like <laughs> where I could find a pair of those. Yeah, you'd have to ask him. But uh, he was. He used to be in a band called World War Nine. That was uh, you know a long time punk band here in the uh, in New York, and uh, all the videos I think he did. Was Damn, I don't know if those. he'll make it to that one, but <laughs> yeah, right. But um, yeah, he had these glasses. Those, those same glasses. Um, you know, he would use them in those videos too. So we're like, yeah, bring them back. Nice. Yeah, those were sweet. It reminded me of going back to WWE references when Edge and Christian used to do the five second five second poses, you know, with the glasses. That might be before <laughs> your guys' time. But uh <laughs> and then uh talk about um the message in your song, nothing good is coming. Oh. Uh, like more more of that pessimism we were talking about earlier. Let's hear about it. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was another one that was written uh, uh, before uh, Joe and Brian came on. Um, I mean, that was just like for for all these like the music uh, generally was came up first. We you know we wrote the music together, and then you know putting lyrics on top of it, um, you know that fit. And um, you know that's just one where it's just kind of railing against. I think I was really railing against. Um, kind of the vapidness that's like internet culture, you know what I mean? Uh, where, you know, it's kind of the idea of, you know, you put shit in, you're going to get shit out. Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean. Like nothing good is coming. Um, you know, there's nothing good coming when you're, you know, you, nothing, nothing really means anything, you know, like, you know, everything that you see on the internet, like so much of it's fake. So much of it is designed to get you to react in a certain way, buy certain things, you know, all this kind of nonsense. And, you know, I think as a result, you just it, it's just a uh, uh, just really hurts the quality of life. Um, I just think it's 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 fucking shit. 
And, um, you know, I think that's really what I'm, you know, the song is trying to communicate. Dude, you're preaching to the choir there, man. I'm fucking, <laughs> you know, I, I'm 50 years old. I'm, I'm finally doing something I enjoy, like with this podcast. You know, I've been involved in the Cleveland music scene for years, you know, have made a lot of friends over the years. But, uh, you know, everything's all about like hits and likes and, yeah, you exactly. Know, all this social media bullshit. I, I, I had this like, I, I won't mention the person's name, but it was, you know, I was, I was scheduled to do this like good, this pretty big name interview, you know, on here, and then I had to like, I had to cancel because of like a, a, you know, a family thing came up, and then I went to reschedule, and then they're like, oh, they're not gonna do it because you don't get enough hits or likes, and I'm like, are you? You know, I, I'm like, you know, and, yeah. and I got to build up like this presence, like I'm some 14 year old TikTok girl and shit. And, and, and it's just not me, dude. You know, I don't think I'm that self-important to tell you what I'm, dude. you know, going to shop for and all that. You right. know, I yeah. just so true, talk man. To people, have a good conversation, be real. And, and, you know, I, I, would I like more listeners and followers and all that? Hell yeah. That's why I'm doing this. I mean, Joe Rogan money I would be nice, but you know, I don't want to have to like play this fucking role on social media and it just sucks because it's like, I, I love, you know, like I had Tommy Victor, uh, on your New York. Oh, wow. Prom, nice. From Pro. You know, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, Danzig. And Danzig. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's and, in Danzig uh, too? He was right. Yeah, he yeah, was on yeah. six. Oh. Yeah, he, yeah, he was just on tour with this the last Word? tour okay. with him. No yeah, shit. Okay. And uh another great, great New York guy. You know, I'm lucky yeah. when I get get names like that on here, you know, but uh I just don't, you know, th even these guys though are getting pressured, like in some of these bigger bands. Oh, you gotta guys gotta be more of a social media influence, and I'm just like I don't know, man. It's just fucking what it is, man. It's like, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to, you know, I try and tell my kids it's not reality, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, you're, uh, you're nothing good is coming, like you said, man. Yeah, I don't it's, know. it's definitely the biggest thing, man, where it's kind of like the, the fact is that a lot of uh, – I, I That was like my soapbox. You, you triggered me. <laughs> a lot of people like really think that what's what they see on the screen is a real representation of reality and it's just not um you know and i think that is affecting our culture in so many ways and you know coming from you know this you know the, our outlook you know the underground, underground culture it's kind of just like man like this this shit's just off the rails dude um so, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, nothing's good coming. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and like what you were saying about like having to do all of this other external shit when you're just trying to do your thing. And like Kirk was saying about the scene, you know, or just music in general and, and with heavy music, there's, there's this embedded Instagram element. Now there's this embedded like social media element to fucking hardcore music to heavy music. And, and it's, it's, um, the exposure is great and it's cool to see that a lot of these bands are getting a lot more opportunities in a time when like live music is definitely not a great way to make a living but at the same time it it it, it creates this game where you're you're trying to play music and you have to do all of this other stuff just to like play your songs for people um just to like get your songs into in front of different people and and i know that that's like part of music that's part of like promotion um, so I'm probably not hitting it exactly the right way, but but the idea being that like we, the, you have to. I I was watching um, Tyler the Creator just had a, a thing with Nardwar that came out today. He did another one, and he's oh, yeah? saying that all of these artists need to quit doing like sneaker drops or like hot ones or like all of these things that have nothing to do with music and they need to get in front of places outlets that talk about music outlets that want to promote their music outlets that want them to talk about what their album is about um and, and just dissolve this this element of like clout this element of like you know personality uh, um um influencer behind there we're musicians we're not we're not influencers we're not 
you know, we don't live these glamour lives. We have jobs. We like, we work fucking hard, man. And like, when we get into our space, it's not pretty every practice. You know, we, we don't live these very glamorous lives. And, and to make us have to look like we're living like a cool life. My car broke down four times on tour this year. Four times. That is not something that we need to post on Instagram. That is not something that's going to, like, give us cool points. It's a fucking broken car. Like, touring is not always, you know, we, we love hanging with the boys. We love, you know, drinking in new places and playing in new places. But it's we don't live these picture perfect lives there. We, we live, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're working for what we get. We're, we're all in our thirties. We've been working hard at this. We've all been playing music for a long fucking time. Um, I don't know. Yeah. You got me on my soapbox too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And like, I just, uh, you know, I, I've, I've just started, uh, gotten this new relationship and, and, and we're talking and she's just like, you know, talking about being our authentic selves you know just be yourself don't fucking pretend to be because it's like whoever you are is who i'm going to want to be be with not this fucking fake per eventually the mask falls off you know yeah. in the early days of any kind of like whatever relationship and shit like that and it's just like you know that social media is like they want you to wear this mask this happy mask and fucking sell this fucking product and uh yeah dude this is it so I've been kind of like almost taking that approach with my social media. And some people have been like, like, dude, I had a fucking bad day the other day, dude. And I was like, legit, like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm retired military, you know, and I, I get bad oh. days in my head, dude. There's some days that just aren't fucking good, you mm -hmm. know? And, but I've been like trying to be on this like kick of like, uh, improving my health and positive mental attitude, PMA and all this shit. Hell and yeah. a lot of people, a lot of my friends are like, dude, you're motivating me. You're inspiring me. I appreciate that. You know, but then I, I had a bad day and I fucking went on and I said, I'm having a fucking bad day. Like fucking grown man in fucking tears, feeling like fucking shit, you know? And, uh, I was just like, I'm going to throw this out there and either, you know, it, internet do with it what you will, you know, not a bunch of people. Nah, I wasn't getting, you know beat up like by all the keyboard warriors about it. Not that I got much of a fucking following is mostly my fucking friends anyway, but it was like, maybe I could fucking take this thing that we're supposed to push. And I'm just going to be real and like have vent sessions like this, you know? Hell yeah, man. Maybe that, maybe yeah. that'll get me some fucking followers. Not that I fucking <laughs> want to, I, I, I've been going my whole life trying to get over the whole, uh, giving a shit what other people think about me because right, that man. thing was like a fucking ball and chain for yeah. years. And I'm finally like, I don't care anymore. I like myself. I'm finally right. going to play that's at fucking fun. 50 where I like myself, you know, <laughs> that's all you can do, man. Fucking therapy session, you know, or anything, no, but, but that's, that's so important. It's man. true. Man. It, it's like, so throw myself out there and whatever, you know, the hate can come or the fucking, or if somebody can be out there and be like, dude, that fucking helped me. Thank you for being, fucking real but either way i just i i i, I don't want to have to play their game but i guess if i'm going to play it i can fucking spin it you know yeah i don't yeah. know but anyway, yeah i mean I, I definitely Cash think Pride. that um <laughs> I, I i definitely think that you know the song i mean in terms of the message or whatever like it's definitely i think it's not just you know limited to the internet but um yeah no it, it's definitely you know, in all these avenues of life where, uh, you know, there's a lot of demand for, you know, just being a placid version of yourself that isn't truly who you are, like, you know, you'll get by easier, um, but you're going to feel more, you know, dead inside. Um, and oh, yeah. I, and I think that's, um, I just, I just think that's uh, unfathomable, really. It's, 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 it's untenable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, in the past, every time I've tried to put on this fucking, you know, persona, like I said, the bad days come out and then it's just like, you know, shit falls apart. So it's just like, you know, fuck it. Just, just be who you are and, you know, Hell yeah. fuck yeah. everybody else. But, uh, let's talk about like when you guys play out. Um, I mean, where have you guys been uh, out on the road? I mean, you talk about the car breaking down, you know, and, and getting out there, but, uh, what is the live shows? Like, what, what do you guys bring to the table that, uh, 
people sh- need to go fucking check out a cash bribe show. I mean, we're fun. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe's a maniac. I mean, I think that's uh, the biggest takeaway. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, as Joe just, I think he gets into another state and uh, we're all just trying to keep up with him. Honestly. We, we all bring it, man. Larry's a fucking animal. Yeah. He, also, uh, yeah. You know, he, he, he's the kind of guy that if we have time for one more song, we're not going to do it because Larry gave himself through everything into his drums. I threw everything onto that floor, you know, and, and, um, you know, we, when we're going for an enclosed set, we're not, we don't play that long, maybe 25 minutes, but maybe, you know, probably closer to 20. Um, but we leave it all out there, man. Um, it's hard to say that you know it's hard to sell a show where we're just like we're raw energy but we're we're pretty fucking crazy man um we uh we go for it we, yeah we the heart rate is live, elevated man. you're getting your high yeah. intensity uh interval training or whatever they call it right absolutely yeah, yeah. like i i do uh <laughs> i work out just so i can play live like i so i can keep up and sing um because i needed like when i joined the band my lungs couldn't keep up with uh with with screaming and and like being energetic so I, I had to like get my lungs in better shape to be the singer in this band. <laughs> and it's, it took about six months. It, it took a while for me to get like, okay, oh, yeah, I can finally fucking breathe, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, we 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 go for it, man. It's 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 our sport. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's the best. Yeah, that's the best right there. It's a hundred percent our sport. Yeah. Nice. And then like, who's uh who's some of the guys that uh, you've uh, been able to share the road with, and any uh memorable areas that you've played we we played on friday at bootleg bar in brooklyn with a band from your town um speed plans so well we played with speed plans and pissed me off one of them's from cleveland one of them's from pittsburgh and i kept getting it mixed up when i was talking to them um but they're both great towns great towns for heavy music um nice so that was really cool being able to play with some touring bands also on that bill was daydream from uh from portland and they they were they were awesome um yeah. Who are our highlights in New York, Kirk? Well, I mean, like in terms of traveling, um, you know, we've mostly been playing here. We haven't really, uh, Cash Bride hasn't really gotten on onto the road so much. That's something we're hoping for 2024. Um, yeah. Joe's, in, Joe's in like a million bands. So like, you know, he, he's, he's on and off the road all the time um, for Cash Bride. Get them lungs going though. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's just Got on it. and on and on and on. And yeah. um for uh, for cash bribe, um, you know we we're, you know this like next month we've got some shows uh, out in uh, like Pennsylvania and um, I think New we're Jersey. like ta- yeah New Jersey, um, so kind of just like a regional kind of thing and um, you know I I think that we're just you know looking forward to bringing it, um, you know all the bands that we've played with, uh, you know just just fun everyone's cool. Uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody wants to. Everybody appreciates, you know, the music. Everyone, you know, wants to be there. Um, it's just a lot of fun, you know. I think we're all in it for kind of the same reason. And it's always cool, like you know, when you play with those out of town bands, like networking and building those relationships, because you know, you give them a show in your town, and they, you know, usually will reciprocate. And, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. On the bill at their, so hopefully, you guys will uh, hit Cleveland at some point. You know, We'd love to, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a um, great place to play punk music, man. Yeah, my place buddy Rob music. owns the uh, No Class, which uh, oh shit, cool. Be, oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah sweet, that's man. wild, so, man. <clears throat> and then, um, well, before we get ready and wrap up, uh, I want to like ask you a couple questions that I normally ask the uh, guests that I have on here. Um, what was the uh? If what class do you feel should be mandatory before graduating high school today? <laughs> Bring back You're, shop. A shop. <laughs> I wish I could work on my car. I don't know how. Bring yeah, back I don't. Shop, man. I don't know how to work on my car either. Um, I don't have a car. I haven't had a car in like a decade because I've been, you know, living in the city. Um, but uh, you know, if they did have like mandatory uh, 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 automotive training, I think I'd be a lot better off shop home ec personal finance like yeah it helped during tours when it breaks down yeah it would yeah, definitely it'd help to know you know a lot of life skills that you learn in your 20s 
that our parents definitely learned in high school. You know, I didn't learn any personal finance from school. And I, no. I think that was a thing that they did in the 50s through 70s, maybe in the 80s. I don't know. I learned how um, to fill out fill out bubbles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Standardized test. Yeah. Take, I could take a standardized test really good. Yeah. So, yeah, so hard, hard, hard skills, man. Hard skills. About, yeah. It's a whole nother episode we could talk about the dumbing down of uh, the nation. You know? It's so <laughs> yeah. You could go on about that, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of this. A lot of this record is kind of about that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, good, man. You got to get the, got to get the, somehow we got to get to the message out of whatever way people fucking like, it'll click, you know? It's like, you know, trying to even have an honest discussion about things on the internet anymore. You get fucking one side will, you know, get to have their voice heard and the other will shut you down, you know? It's like, we can't just sit at the table and have a, have a conversation anymore. So it's like, we got to sneak it in through the music. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> For sure. Rebellious nature. Um, and then who are three people who've inspired you and you could credit for making you the person you are today? Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not good at these questions, man. Um, Joe, you go first. Yeah, okay. Um, definitely w one person is my parents. They, you know, they got me into music. Um Dude from Texas, OG, you know, hardcore metal guy, Riley Gale, was around the scene when I was coming up, and and it was hard to not want to be him every time you saw him on stage. Um, my buddy Matt who taught me how to play guitar. He taught me how to play heavy guitar. He, he's no longer with us, but um, he's one of the reasons that I'm singing in this band. Um, his, you know, he uh, both as a kid getting into music and then after he passed realizing that um, – I needed to play heavy music, man. I needed to get out there and be in a punk band. So, uh, yeah, I'll go with those. Nice. Yeah, and I guess um, my dad definitely helped me. Um, he was really into, like, blues and all that when I was growing up. And uh, he had an electric guitar. That was the first time I'd ever seen one when I was a little kid. I'm like, oh, my God, that's cool. And, um, you know, that was definitely a big influence on, you know, pushing me in the musical direction, um, you know, even if, you know, that wasn't, you know, maybe that was a little frowned upon, but, um, you know, outside of that, man, I mean, like there's so many bands and, and, and songs and things like that, that I've just gotten inspired by over the years that like, you know, it's, it's tough to put it in an order. Um, it's just like, I just, I feel like the world inspires me, man. <laughs> I mean, I know that's really open and not really a statement, but like, <laughs> it's, it's true. If it's how you feel, man. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. All right, this one might be a little bit easier for you. Favorite toy as a child? Uh, Lego. I built Lego constantly, man. I liked Lego. I had one of these big monster trucks, too. Um, do you remember these? Uh, like, the, the wheels would come apart, and they became these big, like, uh, 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 like, God, I, I'm describing it terribly, but... Um, it's like it was a monster truck kind of thing. We roll it down the hill and all this kind of stuff, and I thought that was really cool. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, since you, you uh, obviously were a fan, pointing out my shirt, favorite wrestler, Stone Cold, baby. Yeah, Stone Cold. All day. <laughs> easy answer. Yeah, nice. easy question all day. That's the oh hell line. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, any self-respecting guy that grew up in Dallas, Texas, you know, in Texas, the great state of Texas, better uh, be a Stone Cold fan, right? You know it, man. <laughs> uh, and then um, any message that you have for our military members currently serving overseas? Oh. Uh, thanks for your service. Uh, I hope the powers that be don't make you have to serve anymore. Um you know, I hope you get to get home for the holidays and, yeah. um, thanks. Thank again. Thank you for your service. Yeah. We got a vol. We have a volunteer military. Um, that's, that's incredible. So thanks for your service, Nick. Thanks to anybody yeah. serving right now. Uh, my cousin, Mike's a Marine. Thanks to Mike's service. Um, as we get into the cold seasons, we got a lot of homeless and disadvantaged veterans out there. So to anybody that's not a veteran, not serving, 
um, you know, take take a look outside, especially in these big cities, and and give a helping hand to the people that uh, that wanted to help us so badly. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Wow. Awesome, Joe. Great message, guys. Well, hey, man, it was good talking with you guys. I'm glad I got the vent and, and hijack your interview a little Hell bit. Hell yeah. No, no that was, awesome, that was great, man. I crushed it. <laughs> really enjoyed uh, talking to you. Yeah, really any, uh, For any of the, the fans out there that are new, like, you know, hearing about Cash Bride for the first time, they want to check you guys out and support you, like, where would you send them? Uh, we got a we got a Bandcamp. Uh, you know, you can just search uh, Cash Bribe on Google. And honestly, you'll get us on Bandcamp. You'll get our Spotify, our Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, just look us up. Uh, we'll we'll be there. We're out there. <laughs> I, I definitely uh, you know uh, want them to check out the uh, YouTube video so they too can can uh, fan out over your uh, bass player's sunglasses. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, hey, man, thank you for your time. It was good talking with you. And thank you, uh, man. hopefully, uh, we'll hit you. We'll see you in uh, Cleveland some point in 2024. Yeah, we'll definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All, All right, right. Take care. Thanks so much. Take it easy, man.